let's go on and talk about how to deal with these rate laws and rate orders. Because as we said, they had to be determined experimentally. We said that these constants that we use uh, are unique to the reaction, but they are also unique to the temperature. Temperature that supplies energy. That might change how fast something is happening. If there's more energy there, it might speed things up. Reaction rates depend on concentration. Rate constants don't. So we've separated this. If you've taken enough math, you might think of these as being separable. And if you haven't, well, just concern yourself with the fact about the rates depend on concentration, but the constants don't. The constants change with temperature. They don't depend on concentration, they change with temperature. So on nine, we'll write down what the reactants are. Nitrogen monoxide and nitrogen trioxide combining to form two nitrogen dioxides. Somebody has gone to the effort of doing the experiment and writing down what the initial reaction rate is. And what they've done is three separate experiments and they have changed what the concentration of the two reactants was. And they've done it in a very logical manner to try to make this simple. What we always start with in a case like this is a guess. We're going to guess that the rate is going to have some constant and it's gonna depend on the concentration of the first reactant to some power, which I don't know what it is yet, and the concentration of the other reactant and to a different power. So this is always my first guess. This is what I'm gonna start with as a hypothesis and I will try doing this with the simple method first. There is a log method that you can use, but it's always good to try the simple method first. Now you will notice that every one of these that they've done has been done at the same temperature. So the K should just be whatever it is and not be changing. And we'll figure it out later. What is the difference between experiment one and experiment two? The original amount of nitrogen monoxide has been doubled. This didn't change. The nitrogen trioxide concentration was maintained at the same. The temperature's maintained at the same. But as a result, we see that the reaction rate changed. Oh, how did it change? Oh, this is double that. So this was double when this was doubled. So let me just write that down. I'm comparing experiment two versus experiment one. The difference is that the concentration of nitrogen monoxide doubled and the result was the reaction rate doubled. They did the same exact thing. Two, that's double, right? Two to the first is the same as two to the first. It's two. That doubled and that doubled. So that means whatever the coefficient was that I put as an exponent on nitrogen monoxide is I1. I now say the rate is K and NO was doubled. There's a one there. This one, I don't know yet. This is still up in the air. Well, I have another experiment. Let's take a look at what it does. So if I look at experiment three, I see these numbers and I would make my life very difficult if I compared three to one because then I would have two things that changed at the same time. However, if I compare three and two, I can see that the nitrogen monoxide is unchanged. The nitrogen trioxide was doubled. And look, this was also doubled. The reaction rate doubled when I doubled this one. Oh, so that's kind of the same thing as what I just did. Okay, if I look at experiment three versus experiment one, then I find out that the NO3 concentration was doubled, and that meant that the reaction rate got doubled. And once again, I can say two to the first power is two. So I will now revise what I said about the rate equation. I'll say it's K, NO to the first power. I'm not gonna even bother to write it down. NO3 also to the first power. This is what I believe the reaction 
rate should be. Now, I have one other thing. What about this K? I can use any one of these three experiments to figure out what K is now. Because in each case, I can refer to these giving me that, or these will give me this. So I can use any of the three. Let me just use the first one. I've been told what the rate is. 2.45 times 10 to the fourth, and that's molarity per second, equals K times the concentration of NO, 1.25 times 10 to the negative third molar, times the concentration of NO3, and that was also 1.25 times 10 to the negative third molar. So K will end up being 2.45 times 10 to the fourth molarity per second, divided by both of these, 1.25 times 10 to the negative three, and another 1.25 times 10 to the negative three, and then molarity squared. That'll cancel one of them, and I'll cancel that out. And then I run it through the calculator, and I'll come up that k is 1.57, because I only have three sig figs, times 10 to the 10th inverse molarity and inverse seconds. This is a second order reaction, because there was a virtual one here and a virtual one there. So one plus one equals two. These are your exponents, and your exponents added up to two. So this is a second order reaction. And as it turns out, in this particular case, that's what we might have expected because of there being one of these and one of these, but it's just a coincidence. That's the part that is hard to swallow, is that it is just a coincidence.